Hi, Tara. How you doing? Oh, yeah, an earthquake. <laughs> I know, right? What a lot of you, what a lot of people aren't aware of, even the people who live here. Yes, I'm taking headache pills. Shut up. Is Charleston and the surrounding area, specifically the area up around Dorchester County and Somerville. There is a major fault line there. Really? And we last in the late 1800s. We had a cat. They estimate it was a category seven hurricane. Not hurricane. Uh, <laughs> that's that's what we normally they don't make that <laughs> category seven earthquake Richter scale earthquake. I'm used to hurricanes. We get, now we're having earthquakes too. Um, we had in '74 we had a 4.7, and yesterday we had a 3.3, which everyone in LA is like, so. Yeah, everyone's like, I. I is, does that even count? They're not. We, this is a fault that's not typically very active. But the next time it decides to be very active, ooh la la. <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that like there's like a super volcano under Yellowstone that's like a hundred yep. years past due to erupt and just take out my whole section of America? It, it, it's pretty much going to take out America. Not just a section. It, it, when that <laughs> one goes off, goodbye. Everything is good. Like there are so many From things sea to about shining this planet sea. that are. Yeah, like there are so many little things that are just waiting to kill us all. And that keeps me up at night. But hey, the good news is Republicans in Congress won't pay the money we owe, so our entire credit's gonna crash. Hooray! I night this week. I hate I hate everything this I I, but at least people are still stupid. I want to say things that will get me in jail is what I want to say right now. All right. Well, don't do that. I want to say jail words. I really no. want to. Yeah, but you shouldn't. Not on a thing you're Same. recording. I want to say jail words. Say them quietly when you're not recording yourself. All right. Well, th we should just, that should be a shorthand now on the internet. If you want to say something that will likely get you in jail, just say, I want to say mm -hmm. jail words right now, and people will know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Hi, Simba. Simba. Hi, Simba. Yeah. Dude. Simba, you cannot have his drink. Yes, he can. Sir. Hey, dude. Hey. He's Hello. proving you no, wrong. You he can, in fact, have the drink. <laughs> What? Damn, fine. Whatever. <laughs> uh, all right. That having been said, let's let's get the uh, show because we th we I, I think there is some stuff entertaining here. There's one story that's going to make you want to, to say your own jail words, I think, because um, I got really pissed when I got into it. It starts off like, uh huh, uh huh. And then you get to the we'll get there. Let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong. And um, we're going to start her off with some good old fashioned fuck around and find out. You know, the, the kind of thing that brings us all together with joy. Yes. So there's a thing about social media. And I don't think many people have realized this, but it's it's actually true. When you put something on a public social media post, everyone can see. It. Did you know that? Did you did you know that, Grady? Did you know that? He doesn't care. Um, I knew that. Oh, this fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. FedEx fires driver. I, saw, I done saw this on TikTok. Who refused to deliver to homes with flags representing Black Lives Matter by an administration. So th this 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 guy 
FedEx employee Vincent Paterno mocked Kamala Harris's name with a vulgar term via TikTok. A former FedEx driver who vowed in a profanity laced video to never deliver packages to houses championing the Black Lives Matter movement, Joe Biden or Kamala Harris, has since been fired and now won't be delivering packages to any houses at all. First reported by 2Fab on Friday. What the fuck is that? The delivery company terminated employee Vincent Paterno. 39. After catching wind of a TikTok video, which Paterno smugly states he will not extend services to any house with a flag with, with a flag representing Black Lives Matter, the president or vice president, using a vulgar term to mock Harris's first name. What's up, TikTok? Okay, look. If you're 39. And you're saying, what's up, TikTok? Careful. Because <laughs> I am on that cursed clock app. What's up, TikTok, really? Yo, yo, I yo, yo, that. what up, my boys? <laughs> but you do. You say good morning, TikTok friends. I do. Just wanted to come on here and let you know, if you don't have a flat in front of your house and if you have a joe biden kamala fucking camel toe posted up in front of your house black lives matter i will not deliver your shit i will not deliver your shit i will bring that back to the station and i will keep doing that shit have a good day yes yeah, see okay um how did you think this was going to go yeah like they all have this weird idea in their head of like the the end of an 80s comedy movie where the dude the underdog gives the speech yeah and he gets hoisted up on the shoulders and everybody realizes he was right all along he spoke the true true and and now he's everybody loves him and women will say he has a large penis and <clears throat> and it's the best day in the world and instead your boss sees it and's like yeah you're fired uh, you're, you're fucking and like i i have family members that have worked for fedex so like as soon as i saw that i'm like oh they don't play no like i know from experience that fedex no you are you are not uh, not about to be delivering packages to anyone and fedex to my and the thing, like hmm. if you're in any customer service industry hmm. you don't get like i had to serve people in fucking MAGA hats. Did I like it? No. Did I silently try to kill them with my brain? No comment. <laughs> Jail words. But I, but I did my fucking job. Because that's what you do. Also, it's my understanding that FedEx driver job, that's a pretty good job. Yeah. You got some benefits. You're, you're, you're pretty set for a while. As long as you do the job. I mean, if you've seen the state your FedEx shit ends up in. Pretty much as long as you do the job and keep your head down, you can get away with a lot of shit. Yeah. This is not, how could, how would, you're 39 and you're fucking up a sweet gig like that. Like, fuck, you fucking, do you understand where the, the world is on fire? Have fun driving for Amazon and shitting in a water bottle. <laughs> uh Next up, this is someone did not understand the assignment, and it's Florida, and it's Jesus Christ. How 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 are you real? How the fuck? This guy's just I love him because he's so fucking stupid. Florida man accused of trying to trade car to dealer he stole it from. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's got moxie. I'll give him that. <laughs> Man walks into a car dealership wishing to trade the vehicle he drove up in for in for a new one. Happens all the time, right? But when the man is a Florida man, things get more <laughs> interesting. According to First Coast no News and some other Florida outlets, police in Jacksonville responded to Lake City Chrysler Dodge and Jeep. Scene played out as it does every day, but this time was different. The dealership's sales staff. Uh, logged the VIN on the man's trade-in, they discovered the car had been stolen from that very dealership just days prior. See, 
I don't know if you know this. And you know what? I'm saying this, but it's probably there's someone here is going to be going, wait, fucking really? Inside yeah. your car, there's a little plate, little, little tiny plates, like about that big. And it's riveted to the thing. And it's not just in one place. They put it in a couple places. So they're, they're, they're pretty strict about this one. It's called the VIN number, the vehicle identification number. It shouldn't be called a VIN number because that's a tautology. It's a VIN, vehicle identification. Anyway, that VIN is your specific car's identification number. It is unique to that specific vehicle. It is registered with the state. It is, that's how you get your uh, proof that you own it. All of it. If your car, and they keep records of that. If your car doesn't have a VIN number, you're in trouble because that's, that's, that's kind of very illegal. It has to have one. If it doesn't have one, that's probably shenanigans. So I'm confident that we'll get someone explaining to us a very weirdly specific instance in which they had a car without a VIN and it was okay because people love to tell you how they're the exception to whatever you just said. <laughs> it's going to start with actually. Yeah. But most of the time, you, you have to have that. It's important. So, for shit like this. And the car dealership, they write that the fuck down. They do. So if you steal it, they're going to notice that number's gone. And you bring it back and they run it in their system. They're like, hey, wait a second. This is... When I used to work at Old Navy, you would routinely get people that would walk up, they'd walk to the back of the store, pick up a shirt, take it off the hanger, walk it to the register, and say, I want to return this. All the time. This is, this is like the top-scale version of that. Yeah, it's not like with most customer service, because you do that at a car dealership. They call in the cops. Yeah. There's a reason they call it Grand Theft Auto. They're a little particular about it. Call call them weird. Call them persnickety. Cars are kind of expensive? A little bit. Even more so right now. Also, why didn't you just steal the car you wanted then? Right? Like, oh man, this, <laughs> one, this one doesn't have a cup holder. Shit! <laughs> You stole a car and then tried to trade it in. You already stole a fucking car. Just steal the car you wanted. You won. You've got the car. You're gone. You have the car. Were you trying to launder? I don't know why the... that just occurred to me. What? <laughs> I don't know why that just occurred to me. Well, he's just, he's trying, I think what he was trying to do, he's trying to launder the car. Be like, oh, so he now has a car that's legal? With papers, yeah. Yeah, you gotta trade that shit in somewhere else, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. That, That's like laundering money through your cocaine operation. D it doesn't work <laughs> like that. All right, so this one's this next story. You're gonna start off going ooh, and by the end of it, you're gonna be mad. I was so mad when I got to the end of the story. I was like spitting fucking nails at hey maybe you could talk to the mta on the twitters and whatnot when you hear about this story maybe maybe i don't go off on them i don't give a shit um mta supervisor owed a hundred and one thousand dollars for illegally dodging tolls an anonymous tip kicked off the investigation about the supervisor allegedly was reported for bragging to colleagues about dodging tolls Office of the Inspector General released a 20-page report on Monday dealing a full investigation following an anonymous tip submitted last year that an Assistant General Superintendent had bragged to colleagues about dodging tolls. And not just a little bit. This motherfucker took off his front license plate, not legal, and had one of those cloudy plastic things to go over the rear license plate so that they couldn't catch you with the... um. But the, it gets oh, but 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 better, but better. Um, the report also went into great detail into the employees' lies in an attempt to cover up or evade possible repercussions. Investigators say the man claimed he could not open an Easy Pass account in 2018 due to account suspension. No suspension existed. 
He claimed to be unaware of the lengthy fees owed to the tolling agencies, an impossibility due to extensive notices sent to the mail notifying him of said fees and fines. And investigators... Oh, so you work for them? And investigators caught him in a third lie about why his front plate was missing by corroborating reports with the man's repair shop. Okay. He has cost the state, personally, a hundred grand. And he works for that same department. So he has cost his own department one hundred thousand dollars of, to- of tolls he'd never pay that's that's money that could have gone to any number of things. you didn't get a raise this year <clears throat> talk to this fucking asshole now we get to the part where you get to be mad investigators delivered their findings and recommended the employee face disciplinary actions up to and including termination as well as a full recovery of the fines owned owed The press release distributed Monday states the employee received a a demotion to his previous title of superintendent, a 12-week suspension, and a settlement in order to pay $10,000 in restitution. He didn't get his job? He still works there. He works there. He he got a a suspension, and he still has his job. He still has his pension. He still has all that shit. Generally, if you want to steal six figures from your employer and keep your job, you have to run for Congress. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Although um, the MTA kind of is corrupt as fuck. If I kind of wonder what would have happened if he was just not an employee, but just a person. Oh, he'd be in prison. Right. What the shit does it take to get fired from the MTA? Do you have to dismember somebody on the tracks during you rush fuck hour? fuck a toll booth. I, I was reading a story the other night of a, a girl who jumped a turnstile and ended up in Rikers. Yeah. Jumped the turns for one, one fare, one ride, jumped turnstile, ended up in Rikers. For 250 This guy steals a hundred oh. grand. Oh. hundred grand. And, uh... And I promise you, like, someone's gonna ask Bill de Blasio about this, and he's gonna be like, well, um, I, uh... I hear my mom calling me because Bill de Blasio is a big useless sex shit. He is. He really is. I don't even live there. And I know yeah. that that's terrible. What I don't even live at a place. And I know the people, the, the mayor is a piece of shit. I can't think of a mayor that hasn't been kind of a useless sack of shit in like the last 20, 30 years. I think the last one was Mario Cuomo and look what the fuck his kids like. Yeah, it's both of them. Both of the fuckers. Both of them. Same yeah. shit. I knew I knew that was the, the shit with Chris Cuomo. I knew that was coming. I fucking knew that was coming. Yeah. Yeah. Like you read that article and you were like, mm, I'm not surprised. Other that shoe. Tracks. Other shoe. Oh, there it goes. But uh, yeah, this this. So if you I want to talk to the MTA on the, the Twitters or the Facebooks or go right ahead. Say some jail words. I don't care. You're not, I'm not your dad. <sighs> Fucking fuck this fuck. Do they, they don't Jesus even, Christ. they don't even name him. And that's also yeah. appalling. They go this whole story about how all this happened. They're like, yep, he gets away with it. And you're right. Like if was, if a fucking civilian did that, oh yeah, you'd be in Rikers awaiting trial until you die. Yep. Fuck this guy. Well, let's get more into our normal shit. This is again our public service that we do for the kids out there who are watching and shouldn't be watching. Um, meth is a bad a drug. Meth is a bad drug. There is no good. There is no upside. There is no upside. We to should meth. write it. We should write a children's book. <laughs> Called meth is a bad drug. Could have like a little nursery rhyme. Meth is very bad. You're the graphic design. You're the graphic designer. You <laughs> want to draw it for us? We can. All right. So yeah. Um, Pleasant Grove man accused of various crimes found sleeping in a pile of chicken finger snacks and meth. And that is the yeah, face. That- <laughs> That mugshot has meth written all over it. He's awake now. Um, 
That man hasn't blinked in a year. <laughs> On Friday, okay, a Pleasant Grove man is accused of various crimes. He's found asleep in the press box of the PG Athletic Complex in Birmingham, Alabama, among piles of chicken fingers, chips, candy, and meth. Honestly, <laughs> you take out the meth, and that's how I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> Just replace the meth with Pepsi and put me at City Field. Goals. Friday, September 17th, <laughs> Matthew Williamson, 37, was charged with unlawful breaking and entering a vehicle and theft of property. Police officers transported him to Jefferson County Jail, where he made signature bond and walked out. Less than two hours after leaving jail, Williamson stole a car in Hueytown, hid it in Pleasant Grove on the night of Wednesday, September 22nd. Unknown person broke into the concession stand. The Pleasant Grove Athletic Complex, taking a large quantity of snacks the next morning, Williamson was found asleep in the Athletic Complex press box among piles of chicken fingers, chip, candy, and meth. He admitted the burglaries and cause theft, and he was transported back to jail. Sir. So your ass was already out on bond. And the first thing you do two hours later is steal another car, break into the concession stand, steal a bunch of chicken fingers, and go up and, and, and get and pass out in the skybox with your meth. Like, how hard did you get dumped? <laughs> this does feel like a like like a like a, a 90s song, doesn't it? <laughs> now, this is kind of like want, oh yeah. Okay. This is this is kind of like a blink, one, a blink 182, some 31 kind of yeah. 90s dude song. That, that whole wow. what the fuck? Like, damn, dude. Two hours. But also goals. <laughs> Met, this is what meth does to you, folks. Yeah, it's not a good one. It, it's you know, you have s some beer, pot, use them responsibly. You're all right. Did he like hang out in the concession stand cooking the chicken fingers? Because I'm pretty sure those are frozen. Maybe that's why he was lying on them to, to thaw them out with body heat. <laughs> <laughs> like, was he just third eye blind? That's the one. I don't fingers? look, guys, folks in the channel. I don't I don't fucking know these fucking bands. I know Blink-182. The other ones, I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. You can know them. You know them Goo -Goo for Dolls me. just a little while ago. Yeah, Goo Goo Dolls is different. I, there's like some fucking third eye, whatever. They all sound the goddamn same. And Nash I, is more of a Backstreet Boys in sync kind of guy. They all sound the fucking same. And I don't say this is an old crotchety guy. I lived through this, this shit and they all sounded the same. Anyway, um, they did. And yeah, this, so yeah, this, this is not a good drug. Don't take this. No. drug. There's no upside to meth. There is literally no, man, fucking weed. You come down after a bad day and you're chill. If it's legal where you are, use it responsibly. It's cool. That one makes sense. Having a beer, chill. You come down. After I mean, Weed, you might also wind up in a pile, uh, wake up in a pile of chicken fingers, chips, and candy, but it'll probably be your own. Yeah, yeah. because you you don't have the, you're, you're not going to have the attention span to go out and break into. You're going to be like, you just want to stay, you chill. Yeah. Maybe if it gets really bad, you get a little paranoid. And you'll have a fight with the chicken fingers, but that you know that's about as bad as it goes. All right, next. Ew, I'm not a disappointment. <laughs> The, the last two stories are, we're just, we're fucking escalating tonight. Um, we have seen people make bomb threats for all sorts of reasons, and rarely have they been good ones. And you know, the terrible thing about this is, we're like, oh, that we found a new one. We f Tara, we found a new one. Woman arrested after bomb threats force evacuation of Pittsfield Company. An Aetna woman called in two threats Thursday, disrupting manufacturing operations. Why would she do this? 
An Edna woman who wanted to spend more time with her boyfriend was arrested after she directed two separate bomb plants at Puritan Medical Products where he worked. Forcing evacuations and disrupting the manufacturing process. Police chief. Get a vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> Like, listen, I, I love this man. I adore <laughs> this man. I sincerely hope he kicks cancer's ass. He goes to work. He goes to fucking work. Like. <clears throat> Same woman in a second call two hours later said she intended to place four pipe bombs near the plant. State police notified, uh, state police notified Pittsfield police and the sheriff's office. Um, and then traced the call to Etna. Listen, I want my boyfriend to come home and lay some pipe. It's not the same thing as I'm going to plant pipe bombs. It's a different thing. That's not the same sentence. I, I love how people think, oh, because I'm on a cell phone that's not in my name, they can't find me. That's not how they, they you you have a device that is telling an entire electronic world exactly where it is at all fucking yeah. times. It's it telling them who it's talking to, who it has talked to, where it's been, where it is. It is a loud little it is a snitch. You have a snitch with you at all time. I don't mean that Harry Potter bullshit. It's also, I have bad news for you. You're going to get to spend a lot less time with your boyfriend right. when you're in prison. She was identified as, by authorities as 33-year-old Kayla Blake, charged with a felony count of terrorizing and taken to county jail. And at a med he's working at a medical supply company in the middle. Which, you know, isn't isn't terribly important right now. The fucking pandemic. Like, lady, come on. If he's not spending enough time with you, you find a new one. Yeah, because also this is weirdly obsessive behavior. Right, and controlling. Yeah. Let's, let's, yeah. Yeah. And scary. This is not healthy. Yeah, this is not healthy expression of love. I don't. I don't think this. This, this is fatal attraction. Yeah, I don't think this relationship's got a long term to it. No. But wait, we've got another pipe bomb story, and this one actually planted them for an even stupider reason. Like, okay, do you remember who here remembers the Unibomb? And his wild ass fucking manifesto and his, you know, God, what the I fucking forget half the shit that was in there. I don't even remember what he actually wanted. He just Ted fucking. Like, I don't remember what his manifesto contained, just that he hated everybody. Well, this one is this is like the Unabomber, only dumber. The Dumba Bomber. <laughs> There's our title. Michigan man left pipe bombs at phone stores as part of moral campaign. A Whittlemore man has been federally charged with leaving pipe bombs at cell phone stores and threatening letters at cell towers. Allegedly, the man carried out these acts as part of a moral campaign to end porn and cursing. You know what's worse <laughs> than porn and cursing? I don't know what, what's, what's worse. <laughs> Murder. Mm -hmm. Terrorism. Oh my the second you're God. building a bomb, you have seeded the moral high ground. I have to tell him this all the time. The second you're building a fucking incendiary device, you have seeded the moral high ground. Law enforcement on You're Tuesday. You're a bad person. 
Law enforcement on Tuesday, September 21st, arrested 75-year-old John D. Allen. Later that same day, Allen had his initial appearance in the U.S. District Court for Eastern District of Michigan in downtown Bay City, charged with extortion because he also, in addition to asking to end porn and cursing, he also wanted $5 million. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, he's facing a 20-year felony. More. Um, Allen faces uh, additional charges in the Western District. Case gets Allen began with a Charter Spectrum employee on August 25th finding a letter inside a polka dot envelope near a telecommunications tower. The letter contained a threat and extortion demand to AT&T, Verizon, and other carriers. The employee turned the letter over to the state police. Uh, more threatening letters found in similar polka dot envelopes uh, at towers in Gould City and uh, Ontonagon Village. Uh, attached to fences with black zip ties. The letters each indicated they were from the, quote, Coalition for Moral Telecommunication, or just to at and Verizon, other carriers. Man, I bet I bet Comcast was kind of pissed off. It's like, hey, I, I got some cell phone stuff, too. Hey, yeah. T-Mobile doesn't even get a mention. It's just... I know. We have T-Mobile. Fuck you, man. In addition to letters, uh, CMT claimed to be, quote, almost 30 strong and was, quote, prepared, oh prepared to travel this country and begin destroying inner city communication towers. Really? Inner city? wonder what that means. I wonder what that's code for. Unless several demands were met, all telecommunications containing immoral content must be stopped. Letter to find this immoral content as content, that which includes cursing, pornography, and all manner of indecent communication. So pretty much anything Trump says. How Cover. are the cell phone companies supposed to do that? With technology, Tara. With technology. With the buttons and I the mean, wires and the, the digits and the gidgets and the things. My I mean, God. yes, my iPhone... My iPhone does seem to think I'm a lot more interested in ducks than I am. <laughs> but beyond just like not letting you type certain words, I don't know how that was supposed to work. The night of September 15th, a USPS box bearing black tape with a wire coming out of it was placed outside an AT&T store. Later that day, a similar box was placed outside a Verizon store. Both devices were examined by FBI. FBI Laboratory Explosive Unit, which concluded they were improvised explosive devices or pipe bombs. CMT was written on both boxes, which also contained handcuffs. Both boxes also bore writing instructions that it was the, quote, last warning. Law enforcement uh, authorities developed Allen as a suspect from surveillance camera footage. Law enforcement on September 20th executed a search warrant of his home. Shown surveillance images of the suspect, Alan's wife said she was 95% sure they were of her husband. She also told agents Alan had recently made a trip to the Upper Peninsula and they would find polka dot envelopes in their house. She Sold done. Him right out. She done with him. <laughs> she done with his ass. That is, that is, she's like, yep, I, I am not dealing with this shit anymore. 40 years is fucking allowed, enough. I haven't been allowed to say the word damn it in my own home for 40 years. He's your problem now. <laughs> Red, is, Red is right. Alan told the agency he had penned the letters, signed them, left them. He also admitted to placing the two pipe bombs. So where are the 30 people? In his head, Dara. In his head. <laughs> It's like fucking. Are those all his imaginary friends? It's like being John Malkovich and shit. I don't know. They're in his head. I this, I love that his wife was just like, oh yeah, here let's let's do this whole evidence thing. I got bunches of shit. Come on. That's him. You know we, we can't actually legally force you to testify against your husband. No no no. Sit down. Let me tell you what else he's been up to. <laughs> you got a tape recorder? Get that shit out. <laughs> Break it out. Let's do this. You want to put this on YouTube? Let's go. I am all for it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to live stream this shit? Let's go. I'll zoom it. I don't care. I mean, he doesn't sound like a lot of fun. He doesn't. 75 years. Man. All right. <clears throat> what if and when I somehow hit 75 years old? 
I hope I'm messing around with electronics and I'm building maybe boutique guitar pedals or some bullshit or whatever. That's that's kind of what I want. That's what I'm going to focus on. Maybe I'll still play video games. Fuck it. I don't care. That's what I want to focus on as my not doing shit. Okay? Not fucking getting wound up about the F words at the point I'm making a goddamn pipe bomb. There are For morality. The the but let, let, let the, the first thing we learned this week is kids, there is better shit to do with your time. Even if I still have to work at that age, okay? There's better shit to do with your time. Pipe bombs and extortion for better morals. <clears throat> Um, we learned this week that if your boyfriend is spending too much time at work and won't spend more time with you, you can get a new boyfriend. Yeah. Um, the answer is Tinder, not felony. You can do some online dating shit. You, you can't, they don't let you do online dating in the jails. They're kind of strict about that. We've learned that while... While there are some drugs that will make you fall into an orgy of snacks, um, most of them won't involve committing crimes in the process. Yeah. Orgy of snacks? Great. Just make them your own snacks. I, I, every time I do this, I, I'm halfway joking. But part of me in the back of my head goes, you know, you can make a lot of money going to schools, scaring this kid straight, not by telling you this is the awful thing that's going to happen. It's no, you're going to look like a dumbass if you take meth. You're going to, everyone's yes. going to laugh at you. Your name is going to be on the internet forever associated with the stupid shit you did. And your teeth are going to fall out. So. Yep. That's how you scare kids off drugs. It's like, do you want to be the world's dumbass? That's how you do it. Um, <laughs> We've learned that the MTA really needs to hear your comments on social media about not firing yeah. this guy. Let's let, let give or, you know, back. everyone needs to stop paying tolls. Yeah. I mean, cause yeah, I mean, if they don't care if he does it, I mean, they, they, they're going to give you a 90% discount on any tolls you don't pay. So there you go. Just let them know, just to talk to them on the, on, on Twitters and the Facebooks and stuff. I'm sure they'll love to hear from you. Ah. Jail words. Um, we've learned that if you steal the car from a place, you can't take it back for a new car. No. That's, they're, they're gonna notice. I mean, people are not always the smartest, I'll grant you. But that's kind of a gimme. You know, and yes, I know. Just I sell that motherfucker on Craigslist. <laughs> People on Craigslist ain't going to give a shit. They'll just take it the fuck apart anyway. So yeah, just yeah, there you go. Right. And finally, we've learned if you put it on social media, everybody gonna see it, including your fucking boss. You what did the fuck? I, I, I swear to God, the fucking eighties has ruined all of these dudes. It's like the end of fucking Revenge of the Nerds and shit. They're like, we're going to have Queen playing in the background. And everybody's going to think, yeah, they were right all along. We love them. And they're awesome. And there's not also, that they're rapists. And there's, anyway. there's an entire <sighs> subculture on TikTok devoted entirely to outing people who do terrible shit in public. Yeah, it is. It is. And a I'm kind of, I'm kind of split on it because like they will straight up dox you. But the people they do it to tend to be terrible fucking people. So I'm kind of, I don't know how I feel about it. It is a spontaneously but, generated ARG is what the fuck has happened. 